As a robotics developer, you are making amazing robots and high-end technology. The question comes into mind, if you can build a solution, why you are not going for a startup? A valid question. So let's start a startup journey by understanding some key aspects of it. So let's first fix our thinking. As an engineer, we only look at the things from engineering perspective of or technological perspective only. But understanding the business side is equally crucial for a startup. But what are the business understanding and other common understanding of startups? Let's look into it. Let's start with big wow idea. So you have a very amazing idea and you think that it is going to change the world and you start developing complex algorithm and think about its solution in terms of high end technology, high end hardware requirements. But you miss out on a very critical aspect and that is have you understood the end user or the environment in which the robotic platform is going to be performing? For example, we are making a warehouse automation robots fleet as we have in Amazon. The first thing that comes into mind is it's an indoor robot. Okay, we have to perform the fleet management. Multi robots lines will be there. Okay, I understand the algorithm. No, that's not the case. You have to visit the warehouses. You have to find out the ground realities and robotics possibilities when working with the workers there. This is what you have to figure out. Although you can just build up the fleet management and their communication in your laboratories. But before prototyping their product, you have to understand your end user with the environment. And mostly you get the next question as, okay, now we need the funding. But before that, there is one very important aspect. The problem is understanding your audience. Let's break this concept into simple mathematics and some business jargons. Suppose we have a hypothetical issue that our worker takes $200 for cleaning the dishes and performing the vacuum. But the robot price is $300, $20 for its electricity, charging, etc. And $10 we keep every month for its repairing purposes. Now the worker takes $2,400 per year and the robot costs $660 a year. So that is a difference of $1,740. Now the thing is, Worker performs the dishes as well. So if we give $200 to the worker, $100 is for the vacuum. So you get the $100 back and that you invest into your robot. So you save roughly $500 per year the first year. The second year, more of that. But you keep constant after the second year. The thing is, this is the money problem that you are solving. I can give you something cheaper that is going to perform good and also you are solving the problem of good results and quality because worker can perform certain hours but robots can work all day long so you are giving quality that you will have your robotic worker work for long hours as well as you're going to save 500 dollars a year but understand this in this global network this is a location specific solution there are certain areas where you get a worker for 30 dollars a month for four hours every day so you have to fix your target audience and understand that you are solving their money problem and you are giving them some value or you are getting their time back the next problem comes is understanding of your market as the math works good there is a problem to solve but why hasn't anyone done it before if that is the case you have to go into a lot of statistical analysis what are the reasons is this area short of resources talent resources manufacturing resources what is the problem you have to understand in deep detail but if someone has already done it they have made a robot to some extent and they are selling it for more than three years or providing services then it saves a lot of your time as well because in every business there is a complete apple pie and the business has taken the whole pie if it is the starter of the idea then next competitor comes they take small portion of that pie then other small portion of that pie so you have to bring more value to get into that pie and you get that pie which is basically customers or the market share that you get from that specific pie of that specific area this is the time you bring the idea to life and this stage is known as prototyping i recommend you to prototype type with your own wallet financially because it makes you focus on the problem only as it's your own wallet you don't spend extra money and you try to be quite efficient but still you need to only represent the core idea it's not about solving the whole problem for example if you are making a cleaning vacuum robot that 
covers a square room with a square motion which utilizes mostly the Bostrophidon algorithm. The robot is moving in a straight line but at the turning points at the square edges it might not be that accurate and that messes the whole motion of the robot. That's not a problem. Still your robot is moving representing the motion and in another demo you represent the sucking power of your robot to represent the vacuum. You do two demonstrations one representing one part the other representing the second which is not working no problem you represented the idea and it is performing what you wanted to do to improve your robot you need to improve the quality of robot in every aspect and for that you need a team specifically for robotics you need a mechanical engineer for robotics body and structural analysis electrical engineer and a software engineer you can get a mechatronics engineer you can fill any one of this role by yourself as well but at start you need a tech team for a robotic startup to build it to a level that it becomes of higher quality but still it is not going to be a commercial ready product because that requires a lot of money but now you want to bring this robot into market you have to make everything of commercial quality that requires industries industries requires money for that you go to investors but before that to bring all of the team together still you need resources and whenever resources comes into play you go to the investors for the resources you went to the investors they will first ask are you a team or are you a single person because they know that jack of all trades master of none so bringing a team gives you more acceptance now coming to the point of business aspect as investor is not very much interested in your idea neither in your cool technology that you are building they are first interested in the impacts to the people but mostly investors are interested in the money they put in the money they want 10x 20x the money back that's what they are interested in. You have to think about your business as a money producer for the investors, for yourself as well. But keep in mind, from 2020 to 2023, a lot of great teams from amazing laboratories that contains great minds in robotics have failed. And every year, a lot of startups fail with great teams and executives. They all fail to bring the product to the market with $70 million funding and a lot of these big figures. Still, they fail to bring the product to the market. And the main reason is money feasibility. They are unable to keep up with the money feasibility of the product. Navigation in the world of robotic startups is a complex journey filled with technical challenges and business realities. As an engineer, we need to balance our passion of innovation with solid understanding of market needs and financial feasibility. Because the goal is not to just make a robot which is useless or used by only one single person, but produce a solution that helps humankind progress forward.